Jack the Ripper is a name that remains seared in the brains of almost all of the Western world, and even some beyond. One of the most gruesome and horrifying serial killers to ever exist, Jack, if that's even his true name, brought a wave of terror and disgust to the streets of London in the 19th century. And somehow, even today, his identity remains a mystery. Nonetheless, theories run amok as to who the Ripper really was, and while some are quite outrageous, such as accusations that the famous Sherlock Holmes author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, was actually Jack the Ripper in his spare time, other theories are seen not only as quite possible, but in some cases, even extremely likely. So let's take a look at some of the main suspects that just may have been the real Ripper. Initially, the London authorities believed that the first killing had been committed by one of the local gangs, and therefore failed to look for a potential suspect fitting the details of a lone serial killer until September of 1888, following the murder of Annie Chapman, who had become the second known victim of Jack the Ripper. Now, there were a few things to consider while looking for the potential perpetrator. For one, with each murder came growing speculation that the killer must be either a butcher or some type of medical professional. He, or she, clearly seemed to possess some level of anatomical knowledge due to the graphic actions that would be performed on the bodies of the victims. Additionally, the police were fairly certain that Jack must be someone who lived in or near the Whitechapel neighborhood where all of the bodies were discovered, which led them to hold over 2,000 interviews with locals, but none turned up anything concrete. Lastly, all of the Ripper's victims were escorts, which likely gave way to some type of hint in terms of a motive. With that established, the suspects we will be evaluating today are Montague John Druitt, Walter Sickert, James Maybrick, Aaron Kosminski, and Joseph Barnett. Montague John Druitt was a favorite suspect, in particular, of one London detective by the name of Sir Melville McNaughton. In the words of the detective, Druitt, who worked as a lawyer and assistant schoolmaster, was also a doctor of about 41 years of age and sexually insane. McNaughton even went on to say that he was convinced that Druitt's own family suspected he may be Jack the Ripper. But soon, the body of Druid himself was found floating in the Thames on December 31st, 1888, after having already been there for possibly a few weeks. This, apparent by all investigations, untimely suicide coincidentally lined up with the end of Jack the Ripper's reign of terror, which was a pillar in McNaughton's case against him. Druid's mother had also supposedly gone insane the summer prior, which could have contributed to the speculation that Druid himself may not have been of sound mind. But still, McNaughton's accusation was rather hasty. For one matter, Druitt was not actually a doctor, or 41 years old at the time of his death. Furthermore, McNaughton believed that Druitt would have thrown himself into the Thames after his final psychotic act with the murder of Mary Kelly, but this was not the case as Druitt continued to work both at the school and as a lawyer until the end of November, at which point he apparently got into some trouble with the school and was let go. So in reality, it was likely this that pushed him over the edge, and the timing would have been no more than a coincidence in terms of the Ripper's free ending at the same time as Druitt's life. And even though Druitt's own family supposedly suspected him of the murders, this was not even solid evidence nor ever proven, which altogether seems to clear the unfortunate suspect of any suspicion. Next, we have Walter Sickert. Sickert was an artist known for painting images of escorts and allegedly including hints to the Ripper murders within them. He was also known to be intrigued by murder, including those by Jack the Ripper, and was no stranger to using it as artistic inspiration. An immigrant from Germany, Sickert was also believed to be impotent, which some suggest as a motive for the possible killer's targeting of hustlers. Furthermore, claims have been made that DNA evidence found on the letters allegedly written by the Ripper to the press matches that of Sickert, but alas, this wasn't strong enough proof to do much about, apparently. And while some, such as famous novelist Patricia Cornwell, claim that Sickert was in town during the time of the murders, many actually believe that he was in France throughout the period, due to multiple letters written by his family members which state just that. So while there may be a weak case against him, it doesn't appear that there is much evidence to prove that Sickert was more than just an interesting artist with a flair for the macabre. Yet another common suspect was a cotton merchant named James Maybrick. Similar to our first suspect, the death of this one did line up well with the end of Jack the Ripper's ripping spree. But that's not the only suspicious factor about him. In 1992, over a century after the murders took place, a journal was suddenly found under the floorboards of the deceased merchant's estate that included a motive, timeline, and descriptions of the killings signed itself as being written by none other than Jack the Ripper. This brought to light another piece of fascinating suspicion the next year in the form of a watch inscribed with the initials of all five of the Ripper's victims alongside Maybrick's own name, and the phrase, I am Jack. 
Now, both of these have been highly scrutinized, and there have been some details found in the diary itself that many believe to be incorrect statements that were found from news articles, not from first-hand experience of the events. Furthermore, the man who presented the journal to the public, Michael Barrett, at one point confessed to forging the diary, yet he quickly retracted the confession and his ex-wife later admitted that the journal was actually genuine and had been in her family for decades. Still. It is unclear whether either was telling the truth, and if either piece of evidence were to be fake, the entire case against Maybrick would fall apart. Aaron Kosminski was another name thrown into the mix as a potential killer. Kosminski was a resident of Whitechapel who, according to Detective McNaughton, became insane owing to many years' indulgence in solitary vices. He had a great hatred of women, especially of the prostitute class, and had strong homicidal tendencies. He was removed to a lunatic asylum about March 1889. This put Kosminski into asylums after the final murder, where he would remain until his death in 1919. Additionally, two senior officers on the case also suspected Kosminski to be Jack himself. And while not much is known about the man aside from the fact that he was a Polish-born Jew and at one point worked as a hairdresser, a man by the name of Russell Edwards claimed in his book about the case that the shawl of one victim, Catherine Eddowes, held mitochondrial DNA matching that of Kosminski's. But this is exactly where the case falls apart. Due to a negligent mistake made by the scientist who did the DNA testing to compare that found on the shawl to the relatives of Kosminski, it turns out that the match was in fact a very, very vague one. The scientist actually identified a matching gene mutation, but this mutation was the mutation 315.1c, not the mutation 314.1c that he thought it to be. The latter is only found in every 1 in 290,000 people, but the actual mutation on the shawl and in the DNA of Kosminski's relative is much more common, found in over 99% of people of European descent. This, coupled with the overall lack of concrete evidence, would likely let Kosminski off the hook. Lastly, we have a man by the name of Joseph Barnett. Possibly the most compelling of all cases, Barnett either was the Ripper or was plagued by not-so-happy coincidences. For starters, Joseph Barnett was almost a perfect match for the physical description of the killer that had been given by multiple witnesses. Additionally, many of his friends referred to him, Joseph, as Jack, a very strange fortune if nothing more. And while these details already seem quite convincing, they are only the tip of the iceberg. Joseph Barnett, unlike some of the other suspects, was quite familiar with the Whitechapel area, having lived in almost a dozen dwellings throughout the neighborhood and, most peculiarly, living in the same home as Mary Kelly, the final Ripper victim, until right before her death. Barnett was also believed to be in love with Kelly, and was deeply bothered by her decision to work as an escort to help make ends meet. Barnett even said himself, she never went on the streets when she lived with me. That was, of course, only until he lost his job as a fish porter in July of 1888, at which point Mary returned to her work as a hustler. The theory, then, is that Barnett first began to commit the murders in hopes of scaring her off the streets. When Kelly later brought home another prostitute, though, Barnett is said to have been outraged and a fight broke out between the two that led to a window being shattered and Barnett moving out at the end of October. Ten days later, Mary Kelly was found dead in her apartment, apparently having been murdered in her sleep and with her door still locked. This alone leads one to believe that the killer may have had a key of his own, which immediately puts the spotlight on Barnett. The only catch is that the motive for Barnett to kill Kelly is slightly unclear, especially since it is believed that the two were back on good terms after Barnett had left on the night of the argument. Nonetheless, there is one more detail to the suspect that fits the other murders, and that's the fact that Joseph Barnett was a fish porter, meaning that he had extensive experience with boning and gutting fish, and therefore just may have had enough anatomical knowledge in general to explain the oddities of the other graphic murders. And Mary Kelly was the final victim. So, while this is not an all-inclusive list of suspects, and very well may lack the name of the actual killer, these are some of the most highly scrutinized nonetheless. We may never know the true identity of the ghastly killer we know as Jack the Ripper, but I'm curious, who do you think it was?